Tamara Basic Tees here, and today I'm gonna show you how to add some rise or some height. This is a little pair of low rise shorts that belong to my daughter-in-law, and she wanted them to be a higher rise or fall higher up on your hips. So you're gonna add height to it, which is also called the rise. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is measure this top waistband right here. So I've got a ruler attached to my rotary cutter mat, and I'm going to start at one over here on this side, and then I'm gonna make sure that the front and the back are actually together. They're together, see the front and the back? And I'm gonna open this up and along the ruler, and I'm gonna see how wide this is. So it's almost 13 inches. It has a quarter of an inch extra, but you're gonna have to keep in mind there is gonna be one seam allowance because I'm going to use a quarter inch serger stitch. So I'm gonna make it go all the way around and there's only gonna be one seam. So it's gonna be 20, six inches is how long I want this strap to be. I started adding the rise on these shorts and didn't realize I was going to do a video about it. So a lot of the work is already done. I decided that I wanted a four inch rise to the short. So this piece is actually eight inches long because it's on a fold. So if you put it on here, I cut the piece to eight inches and then I folded it over and made it four inches. So this piece lengthwise to match up with the hips is actually about 26 inches. And when I put the seam allowance in, it's almost that 13 inches um, that this is, that the, the shorts are. So it should match up just perfectly. So I've sewn these with a serger stitch and I am gonna attach this section to the center scrunchy butt part on the inside of these shorts. So I'm just gonna see where that seam is right here and I'm gonna add a pin and I'm just gonna pin it in place. And usually what I do is I fold things in half and find out where that halfway point is on the other side, it's right here. And then I find the halfway point on the garment that I'm sewing it to. So I'm gonna put these two pieces together because it, it looks like two ends. And I'm gonna find the halfway point right in the middle and it's about on that rhinestone. So I'm just gonna hold on to it with my nail and I'm gonna put this other piece right there and we're gonna end up sewing this on. So I'm just gonna add that piece right there and I'm gonna pin it and then I open it up and I do the same thing. I put the two pin parts together and make sure they line up and fold both pieces and then pin it where that fold is on both sides so that I know I'm getting it really close and it doesn't bunch together. And then I'm gonna do it on the other side. So I'm gonna fold the waistband where those two pins meet at the front and the back. And there's that side piece. And then I'm gonna fold it again. And I'm gonna find out that's the piece. And then I'm gonna pin these pieces together open it up, pin it together. And now that I've got those, the two on the side and the front and the back, it should be pretty accurate. So just to make sure, I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna put one more right here in between the two marks. Do you see it? There's a pin here, there's a pin here, and then I am going to pin it right here. I am going to the theater with my friends tonight, so I'm kind of dressed up and I got my pretty jewelry on. We're gonna go see School of Rock. Um, I love my theater friends, we have so much fun. So I'm gonna do the front and the side again, and I'm gonna do these, this four times.
So the rest of this is going to need to be hand sewn instead of with a sewing machine because these rhinestones are going to get in the way. And if I use a machine, I don't really know how they're glued on. I didn't make this garment. They might pop off and fall off. So I'm just going to hand tack this waistband that I made to the shorts. So whenever I hand sew something, um, I usually get my thread, thread the needle. It's kind of hard for me nowadays because I'm getting old and I can't see. But I usually double the thread and then I just tie a knot at the end of it. So the thread's going to be doubled over on both sides. I think you can see that. And then I just loop it around my hand and tie it a couple times. Or I'll do it three times. I'll probably start it where my original pin was. So I'll do it in the back because I feel like this is the least visible. And then I'm just going to kind of tack it down and loop it around. So I'm going to loop it here. And I'm going to make sure, as I'm rethinking as I'm doing this, that the top part of this serger mark, I can feel it on the top part of the waistband. And then I'm just going to loop it. So both pieces. And then I'm going to come down to the next one. Just, I don't know, about a half an inch, quarter of an inch over. It depends on how quick you're going to be doing this. And then I'm just going to loop it through and go all the way through. And I've showed you a video about it before, but as you sew and go through so it doesn't break when you put it on and off your hips, because that's going to be pretty, um, a lot of use. You're going to take it on and off to go to the bathroom and, or for whatever other reason. And you're just going to feel it over, feel where the serger stitch is. Cause I know I didn't mention this, but I did sew the bottom where I was going to sew it all the way around. <clears throat> so I'm going to go over about a half an inch, quarter of an inch again, and just tack it. So when I'm poking the needle through, I'm not really poking it through the other side because um, this stitch right here is probably four pieces of fabric um, with the two tucked in like the piping or the binding that I've showed you before. So when I stick the needle in there, I'm just getting the first two fabric layers. I'm not going all the way through. So you're not going to be able to see this thread on the other side of the garment where you wear it. If you get to where it kind of puckers a little bit, just stretch it and you'll have that little pucker right there when you sew it. But when you put it on, it'll go away. You see that pucker coming up a whole bunch um, when you before you get to the pin, just add a little teeny tiny bit before each stitch and compensate for it until not until but compensate for it before you get to the pucker because otherwise you're just going to have this big gap and you can work with it as you go. Tie in a knot, I loop it in my fingers, and then I push that knot all the way down to where the existing knot is. I use my fingernails a lot. And then I pull it through, cut it off, get rid of your excess thread, grab some more thread, and we'll start again. So to start it again, I'm going to start it about a quarter an inch or a half an inch farther over then I stopped my other stitch. So these are really loose stitches, honestly. See, I mean, there's going to be a pucker, so I'm going to compensate for some of it and add it for that stitch. Extra pucker. Just pull a little bit into that before that stitch. I can see the cat fur on my stuff. I try to keep my cat off the sewing table and he just won't have it because there's a lot of natural light and he really likes being up here. Extra. So I'm just going to compensate and try to add a little bit right here because otherwise you have kind of like a weird fold 
when you put them on, if you don't compensate for that kind of gap and pull it over a little bit. See, there's that big gap right there. Just add a little bit. Add a little teeny bit of gap before the stitch. Now it's super hard to see this because it's black fabric, but I hope you get the gist of it. And any of you that are already sewers or crafty, um, I think you'll be able to catch on to this pretty easy. And once again, I want to point out that I am a self-taught seamstress, and this is what I have found that works. And I'm not really sure I follow the rules and do what they would teach you at fashion school. Um, but these are things that have worked for me throughout the years. And most fashion designers don't sew their own stuff together anyway. I think they do the first time and then uh, they send it off to manufacturing and have somebody else do it and make sure that it's correct. So, this is the back of the shorts with the scrunchie butt right there. And this will be the front of the shorts right here. But I hope that was helpful. I hope you found this video educational. If you like what I'm dishing out, check me out at basictees.com where I sell my sexy PDF sewing patterns and I have a new sewing pattern coming out every two weeks. You can also check me out at basicteesboutique.com that's connected to my Etsy 